the pair of shoes that were just roasted by fire and tested vigorously are the Back to the Future shoes priced up to $40,000. Today, we will see if it's worth this price. The core principle is to do something they don't allow. The instructions say not to run, so let's get on the treadmill first. Increase the speed to the maximum until you can't run anymore. Then comes a slip resistance test. Before the official start, the sole of the showy was damaged. Next is stepping on a nail. The result is that the nail penetrated the sole of the shoe in a second. For safety reasons, the subsequent tests will no longer be worn on the feet. Instead, a stick is inserted to replace the leg. One side is roasted by fire. The other side is cut with an electric saw. All these activities seem to forget that it's just a pair of shoes. After some tests, the surface of the shoes has shown many damages. Next is the pressure resistance test. A truck ran over it and the sole of the shoe finally fell off, but it can still be worn. Clearly, the pressure was not big enough. Instead, a road roller was used to continue the test. The road roller, which is 10 times heavier than the truck, directly pressed the pair of shoes. At this point, it looks quite disastrous, doesn't it? A few times after cleaning the shoes, I dyed them to create a new color, but that's not all. Then I poured lubricating oil on it to test the performance of the shoes now. As you can see, it has lost its slip resistance for a long time. The final advice is that you shouldn't do the same with your shoes. This machine can move and pave the road at the same time. It holds the roller in front and keeps moving. The natural alloy roll will be laid flat on the ground. This is the unimaginable temporary road paving machine. It was invented to build temporary roads for special sections. Whether it's a snowy road when it snows or a muddy road when it rains, just let it pass. It will pave a reliable and smooth temporary road, splicing the alloy plates in the shape of tiles together. It not only minimizes the impact on the existing road surface, but can also withstand the pressure of large trucks. In addition to being able to be used in complex environments such as forests, it can also help vehicles from the beach to land. What is worth mentioning is that the repair is also very convenient. Whichever part of the alloy plate has a problem, just replace that part. When recycling, it can complete the recycling quickly. In addition, people have invented a simpler version. The white plate is made from high-density polymer. Although it is much lighter than the aluminum alloy roll, its maximum load capacity can also reach three tons. Not only that, people have invented a military truck road paving machine. Machine. While moving slowly backwards, the iron plate in the truck bucket will roll out, quickly paving a railway. So, isn't this very interesting? This is a great invention in the history of trains, the adhesive hook, which is the device connecting two train cars. The most important thing is that it never comes off. Its formal name is the coupler. Each car is equipped with one, with one of them having a fixed pin. When two cars need to be connected, the hooks open and connect, and the two hooks grip each other tightly like two palms. At the same time, the upper pin will automatically drop down, locking the state. It's worth noting that they don't grip each other completely, just as you saw at the beginning of the video, because as the train moves on under undulating tracks, there may be shaking. Leaving gaps can prevent the cars from derailing. So far, this device has been used for hundreds of years. In addition, researchers have also developed a more complex automatic coupler, with one such device on each car, with two connection points, one protruding, and one recessed. When the corresponding points are combined, the pin will quickly lock. Using this type of coupler not only increases the connection speed, but also allows trains to pull heavier loads. What is the purpose of this machine? The machine pulls a large square block along the road, rolling incessantly. Each time it falls, the forceful impact on the ground creates a strong sense of agitation. This power immediately shakes the road within a few meters around. This is a special road braking machine. It can break up ground with a thickness of over 30 centimeter, causing even concrete roads to shatter into pieces. Just by changing the shape of the road roller, such a significant effect can be achieved. In addition to squares, there are also triangles and pentagons, but they all serve the same purpose, which is road rolling. However, it also has its drawbacks. Although the working efficiency of this square road braking machine is very high, the sound produced by the strong impact on the ground is too loud, only suitable for suburban work, and completely unsuitable for urban areas. Therefore, this road braking machine has been invented. It ensures the braking efficiency without causing noise as before, only seen constantly shaking and pounding the ground. Although the action is not significant, the frequency is very high, with 300 impacts per minute. Concrete beneath the ground will gradually disintegrate. Then, rolling again with a round roller, the concrete will turn into a pile of debris. This ensures no impact on the environment and can effectively complete the road-breaking work. 
two rows of saw-shaped teeth move forward in an open mouth shape. At the same time, it rotates continuously, able to collect all the large rocks in the soil, returning to you a clean and flat land. This is the precise rock filtering machine. Its precision lies in its two filtering devices. After the front saw teeth push the rocks to the middle position, four long iron teeth will flip the track to push the rocks inward. Below it is the first filtering device. The smaller rocks will return to the soil, while the larger ones will be collected into the collection box. Below it is the second filtering device, responsible for the second filtration. In this way, the machine will accurately collect the large rocks, then control the lifting of the collection box and directly load the rocks onto the truck for transportation. In addition, you can choose not to transport the rocks away. Just replace the collection box with a grinder. The front saw teeth remain unchanged to concentrate all the boulders in the middle, then the grinder directly grinds it on the spot. However, it can only grind small and medium rocks in the soil. To prevent huge rocks from damaging the saw teeth, the designer also added a static device on one side. When the saw teeth come into contact with a huge rock, it will stop rotating. After passing by, it will continue to rotate. Such a design can prevent the saw teeth from breaking. So, isn't this quite miraculous? This young man, who can be said to fly right before my eyes, is showing off his customized drone. After flying around over the water, the drone suddenly encountered a problem. After this accident, I guess he will not dare to fly over the water anymore. If talking about a safer flying vehicle, it must be this green board. Step on it, and the next moment it can take you flying off the ground. The 36 round holes on the surface are 36 large power fans installed inside, performing the flight through the reaction thrust generated. The reason I say it is safe enough is because it only flies as high as 30 centimeters at most. Although not high, but finally leaving the ground is considered flying. And the speed has also been limited to 20 kilometers per hour. As long as your weight does not exceed 330 pounds, it is enough to let you fly safely near the ground. What's interesting is that since the invention of drones, ordinary people have created their own flying tools. They enhance the power of drones. If not, then increase the number of propellers as long as the drone can carry them to fly. Those who are more timid have designed a safer cockpit. So, do you think these drones are interesting? Everyone says they are under great pressure, but is their pressure greater than the pressure he has to bear? Six powerful columns use a pressure of 6,000 tons to crush the bamboo strips. They press them into panels, which are also the common wooden floors seen. This perfectly illustrates that as long as the pressure is large enough, even ordinary things can become valuable materials. This is the amazing cold pressing process. Here is the hot pressing process, which is much stronger than the previous process, although it uses the same type of raw material, but the quality cannot be compared. First, they split the bamboo into smaller strips, then remove the unnecessary parts, put it in a high temperature oven to steam for three hours, remove bacteria and sugar in bamboo, then apply glue, and evenly place on the heat press. There are many types of heat presses, and the number of heat plates also varies. After starting the press, it will push the heat plate to press the bamboo strips. The pressure here can reach 2,500 tons, and during this time, the heat plate will emit a high temperature of 180 degrees to continue melting the glue. High temperature plus high pressure can make the bamboo tightly combined with each other. The bamboo floor made is not only sturdy, but also has good moisture resistance. In contrast, the cold pressing process relies on pressure to process and finally melts the glue. This can easily lead to different densities inside and outside the board. If installed outdoors, it is easy to warp, even moldy. Therefore, the use of the cold pressing process, in addition to low cost, has no other benefits. So, do you understand? A ship in China broke a bridge. There could be three different hypotheses about this event. First, if the ship loses control due to improper operation, the impact generated by its huge mass and momentum could be destructive, enough to collapse the sturdy bridge surface. In 2007, the Zhujiang Bridge was hit by a sand ship. At that time, goods were scattered everywhere. The sand ship deviated from the main route and hit the number 23 pier of the Zhujiang Bridge. This collision not only caused the number 23 pier to collapse instantly, but also triggered a chain reaction, causing the neighboring number 24 and number 25 piers and more than 200 meters of the bridge surface to collapse as well. At the same time, four cars fell into the river and nine people did not survive because of this. Secondly, through the on-site video, it can be seen that the bridge piers on the navigation side have been equipped with fixed anti-collision devices. However, these devices could not function effectively under the water level at that time. Of course, we also cannot ignore the possible impact of the method of constructing bridge piers. There are three common methods of constructing 
constructing underwater bridge piers. Inspection method, sinking method, and piling method. The inspection method is to surround the water area, then use a pump to pump out the water inside, creating a relatively dry construction environment. Construction workers can build bridge piers. After the bridge pier is built, they will dismantle the inspection. The sinking method is to prepare reinforced concrete bridge piers on land, then transport them to the construction location and sink them to the predetermined depth of the riverbed. The piling method is to use a pile driver to drive piles into the riverbed or seabed, form pile foundations, and then build the bridge pier. In conclusion, whether it is due to the ship losing control or the bridge design flaws, if the construction method is wrong or the construction method is wrong, then this is a lesson. So, what do you think caused the collapse of this bridge? If an underground pipe is damaged, you can renovate it without having to destroy it. Using this machine, you can install an internal armor layer for the pipe. Whether it's round or square, all can be installed. This is the unimaginable pipelining technology. This is a type of technology that can extend the lifespan of the pipe for decades or even hundreds of years without having to dig up the ground, without having to replace the pipe with much effort. The core device is this rotatable installation frame. Because each pipe has different sizes and shapes, workers will first create an installation frame suitable suitable for the pipe. Then the truck will pull the PVC roll over the pipe. When the worker underground finishes installing the frame, the worker above will send the wheel-shaped PVC bar down, and the worker underground will clamp it onto the rail of the installation frame. Thus, the worker above will be responsible for sending the PVC bar down, while the worker underground will be responsible for supervising the machine. When the time comes, the wheel on the frame will lead the PVC bar. Rotating around the frame non-stop, the PVC bars will automatically clamp onto each each other round by round, forming a new pipe. Using this method to save the pipe that is about to be discarded not only reduces construction costs, but also saves time. So isn't this interesting? 